Hi everybody, my name is Molly Shea, and I'm a student at Humboldt State University nearby in Arcana. And there, I study wildlife, which means that I get to study all different kinds of animals and the things they do. For example, where they live, what they eat, or how they interact with each other. It's really cool. So today, I'm here to teach you about wildlife. So first, we're going to start off with the basics. What do you guys think is a mammal? Have you heard of a mammal before? A mammal is a type of animal that has hair, right? It also lays eggs. No, it doesn't lay eggs, huh? Mammals give birth to live young, right? Which means they don't have their babies in eggs or in nests like birds. They give birth to them alive. Also, what else do mammals have? So we said they have hair, right? They give birth to live young. How about when they're babies, what do they eat? Milk. Their moms feed them milk, right? And then also there's one more thing I'm thinking of. So, when you're a mammal, you need to have a lot of energy, right? And to have that energy, you keep your body at the same temperature all the time, right? So, how do you do that? You're warm-blooded. Being warm-blooded means you can kind of control what your temperature is at and keep it at the same rate. And we, like mammals, have that too. We keep our body at a temperature of 98.6. And so when it goes up or down a few degrees, it can make a big change, right? You can be really sick if you're only a couple degrees higher than 98.6. So mammals in the wild are like that too. So how do you think they get all this energy to keep their body at that same rate? Hmm, there's a couple different ways, huh? When you're tired and you need more energy, maybe you take a nap, so sleeping helps. How about when you're outside, maybe the sun? Like plants, the sun gives us a little bit of energy at a time too. And also there's one big thing we get our energy from. Food, right? When you're hungry and you eat a bunch of lunch and then you go out to recess, you have all the energy to go run around, right? Exactly. So wild animals are the same way, especially mammals. They get a ton of their energy from food, which is why it's really important. And so, as scientists, if we're looking at some mammals and we're wondering, what do those mammals eat? How do we know? Well. We could go outside and look at their poop. That's one way. We could also maybe watch them with some binoculars. Or we could look at their teeth. Teeth tell us a lot about what an animal eats. And so for mammals, we tend to break them up into groups about what they eat. There's two main groups I can think of right now. So there's animals that eat meat, right? What are those called? Carnivores, exactly. So we're gonna start with carnivores, okay? So if we're a carnivore and we're eating all meat, what do our teeth look like? Are they sharp or are they flat? Are they big or are they little? What do you think? Usually carnivores have pretty sharp teeth, right? And they're big and pointy. So I'm gonna show you a carnivore real quick, okay? So this is a carnivore skull. I won't tell you what kind of carnivore it is yet, but I want you to look at its teeth. So see these big teeth in the front? Those, for right now, we're gonna call them jabbers and stabbers. In the science world, we call them canines. And those help when an animal is, like a carnivore, is running after its prey and it grabs on those canines, or jabbers and stabbers, help hold on so the animal can't get away. And also, I want you to look at these teeth right here. That tooth, for right now, we'll call it a slicer and dicer. In science, we call them carnassial tooth. So you can kind of remember carnivore and carnassial. And those teeth act like scissors. So when the animal is chewing up its food, it can slice it into smaller pieces. It's kind of like having a pair of scissors in the back of your mouth, huh? 
so that are two, those are two types of teeth you want to look for when you're looking at a carnivore. The canines up here in the front, and this guy's missing one, so we'll look at this side. This one and this one, those are the canines. And the carnassials here in the back, the slicers and dicers. So I'll show you another carnivore so you can look for those two types of teeth. Okay, so this is another carnivore. So do you see it's jabbers and stabbers? Yeah, right here up front, huh? And then how about the carnassials or the slicers and dicers? Yeah, this tooth right here, exactly. So this is another carnivore. Okay, so now that we've talked about carnivores, let's talk about herbivores, okay? Herbivores are the kinds of animals that don't eat meat, they eat only plants. And so, what do you think their teeth look like? Are they sharp and pointy? Like a carnivore's? Hmm, probably not, right? Herbivores have very special teeth, and that's because plants guard all the good stuff that gives them energy in this like cell wall, which is kind of like a little wooden box that it keeps all its nutrients in. And that little wooden box is hard to break open. So animals that eat plants need special teeth to mash and smash those wooden boxes so they can get to that good stuff. So herbivores' teeth are big, flat, and broad. I'll show you a big herbivore I have here today, okay? So this is the top part of a horse skull. And I want you to look at its teeth. Do you see back here? Those teeth are really flat and broad and they're really good for mashing things up. So see, I'll show you the horse with the bottom part as well. So if you think about the horse chewing on plants, it has all those flat teeth in the back to mash things up. So now we have carnivores that have the jabbers and stabbers and slicers and dicers, right? Canines and carnassials, those are the teeth you look for when carnivores. And then we have herbivores, which have those really flat mashers and smashers in the back of their teeth so that they can grind up the plants they eat. So now that we have those two groups, carnivores and herbivores, let's talk a little bit more about carnivores, okay? I want you to, so I have two carnivores here, right? I have this one we showed you before, and this one, which I also showed you. So, one of these carnivores eats meat and nothing else but meat, and the other one eats meat most of the time, but when it can't find meat, it eats a couple different things. So, I want you to think about the teeth that herbivores and carnivores have. Carnivores have sharp, pointy teeth, right? And herbivores have flat, mashing teeth. So when we're looking for the carnivore that eats nothing but meat, it should only really have pointy teeth, right? Let's open this up and look. What do you think? Do you see any flat mashing teeth? I don't know. Let's look at the other one. How about this one? Okay, so I want you to think about these two carnivores. Which, and let's take a vote. What, how many of you think this one is the one that eats meat and nothing else but meat? Raising your hands? Okay, I see it. How about this guy? How many of you think this guy is the one that eats meat and nothing else? Okay, so let's look one more time inside your skulls. Okay, so if we look Behind the slicer and dicer teeth, which is here on this guy, right? This big tooth here. And it's here on this guy, right there. This guy has teeth behind his carnassial, right? And they're a little bigger and flat and broad, right? Than his other teeth. And this one has like almost nothing behind his carnassials or slicers and dicers. So that means that this guy 
eats meat and nothing else because he doesn't really have the right kind of teeth you need for mashing up plants or anything else that's not meat. And this other one is the one that does eat some other things besides meat. So what do you think this is now that you know it eats only meat? Do you have any guesses? I'll give you a clue. We have some of them in Humboldt County. They're really big. What do you think? It's a mountain lion. So mountain lions eat meat and nothing else but meat. Crazy, right? How about this other one? Do you have any guesses for what that is? This one. Now we don't really have any of these in Humboldt, but they are close by. This is a wolf, a gray wolf skull. And dogs, compared to cats, like the mountain lion, sometimes eat stuff other than meat, which is why he has those teeth in the back that help him do that. So, now we've talked a lot about carnivores, and we've talked about herbivores as well. So when you go outside, what do you think you are going to see more of? Carnivores or herbivores? Maybe carnivores because they're cool? Or herbivores? What do you think? Well, when you go outside, what do you see more of? Animals or plants? You see a lot of plants, right? Which means that herbivores have a ton of stuff to choose from. And therefore, there's lots more herbivores in the world because they have lots of options. Whereas carnivores don't have as much to choose from when they're looking for dinner. So, now I'll give you the best of both worlds. We have our herbivores and carnivores. How about animals? that eat both. You know what those are called? Those are called omnivores. And omnivores have teeth like carnivores and herbivores. So I'll show you an omnivore. This guy is an omnivore. We have these in Humboldt County too. We'll look at its teeth and I'll give you some time to think about what it could be. So if you look in the front, this omnivore has the jabbers and stabbers like a carnivore. But if you look in the back, you don't see that slicer and dicer tooth. And you open it up, and its teeth are kind of flat and broad, like an herbivore. Which means this animal has teeth to eat both. Jabbers and stabbers, and mashers and smashers. Just like a carnivore and an herbivore. It no longer has that slicer and dicer in the back that helps it cut up meat. Only carnivores have those. So this omnivore is a black bear. And we have a lot of those in Humboldt County. So if you ever see one, now you'll know that they don't only eat meat, but they also eat plants and berries too. So we've talked about three different groups of animals, right? We have our carnivores, pretty cool. Jabbers and sabbers, slicers and dicers. And we have our big old herbivores, right? Which have the mashers and smashers. Good for breaking up those plants. And then we have our omnivores, which eat both plants and meat. So now you guys are experts on telling what animals eat based on their teeth, right? Cool. Well, now we'll just look at some other fun things to give you a comparison.